Mustamum curry. This is easily one of the tastiest curries that you can make, and it's really not that hard. This curry traditionally was made with chicken, but it's actually more common now to be made with beef. So the beef I've chosen here is a flank steak. Now you can use any steak, any stewing steak works really well, um, but I like the intermuscular fat in a, in a uh, flank steak. These are our aromats for our curry paste. So we've got garlic, shallots, dried chili, lemongrass, and galangal. Now galangal is often referred to like a ginger, and I really don't like that analogy because to me the flavor profile is completely different to ginger. Um, it's not a strong flavor. Um, it's uh, quite aromatic. Uh, it's not spicy at all. Um, and a fun fact about Gullingale, it used to be my nickname in a restaurant I used to work in, in London because I was the only white boy there and all the Chinese guys would call me Gullingale because it's white. Then the dry spices. Now, you can use whole spices, toast them and grind them yourself, um, but I've chosen to use ground, pre-ground spices today, um, mainly because I'm being lazy. So the spices we've got here, we're gonna use to flavor our curry paste. Um, we've got cumin, coriander, uh, nutmeg, cardamom, cinnamon, and cloves. Now don't stress, the recipe will be in the comments below, so don't feel like you're gonna jot this all down. Uh, and then we've got coconut milk, we're gonna need some beef stock, uh, some potato, some tamarind to balance out the, the sweetness, uh, and some sugar. So the first key step is getting our beef cooking. So in order to cook our beef, we're gonna start with prepping our lemongrass. So you're gonna take all the outside leaves off, uh, and you're just going to keep that nice center part, which we'll use for our curry paste. So put your diced beef into your desired cooking vessel, along with all the offcuts of lemongrass and your liter of beef stock. Now I'm using the pressure cooker because it takes about 40 minutes in a pressure cooker, but you can just do this in a pot on a stove top, but it is going to take an hour and a half to two hours. So once you've got your beef cooking, you're going to start with our curry paste. So in order to do that, we're going to dry roast some of our aromats. So we'll start with our garlic, uh, our shallots uh, and our gullingale and you're going to get those into a bone dry pan. Now it's kind of unusual to dry roast spices like this um, but this is what they do um, and you want to really burn them. You don't want to muck around, you want good colour on these. So time to attack the lemongrass, so you're going to chop it up as fine as you can and that's just going to help the food processor when you start making your curry paste. Now the chilies. Now the dry spices. Now make sure you got your heat off for this one. Smells good in here. Make sure that's ready. Just peel our garlic. Pressure cooker farted in the background. What was that, babe? Lemongrass. Chilies we're gonna break open and de-seed. Finally great, oh, gal and gal. Imagine Max sent me this cook expert, which is pretty tricky. It's got like a bunch of different attachments. And even the fruit process, it comes in three sizes, which fits into each other. Kind of handy. Anyway, so we're going to blend this curry paste up now. Uh, traditionally, it's done in mortar and pestle, but hey, I don't have one. And I have this. Dry spices. Just a dash of water. Just to get everything lubricated. So pop that curry paste into the fridge while you're waiting for the beef to finish and that will last in a sealed container for up to a week really. Uh, and in the meantime, get your potatoes ready. So you wanna dice them up into sort of you know, 12 pieces per medium sized potato. So now on to cooking the actual curry. So you're gonna start in a heavy base pot uh, and you gotta get a neutral oil in there. So I'm using grapeseed oil here. Um, once you've got a medium heat into that pot, you're going to add your curry paste and fry it off. Now, don't be afraid to, to really cook this curry paste out. Um, you really want to start developing those flavors. So back to your pot of your braised beef. Um, now, you don't want to pull this out while the liquid is still completely scalding hot. What that will do uh, is it will dry out the meat. Um, and this is where I've got a little... Uh, confession to make and I think I actually overcooked the beef in this one now um, currently the state that it's in right now it's beautiful it's uh, tender and moist and juicy but you do need to continue cooking it in the curry paste so uh, I ended up cooking this for 60 minutes in this uh, pressure cooker but I think next time I'll pull it back to 40 minutes because you still want a little bit of bite 
and make sure you're keeping this cooking liquor. You will use some of it in the curry, but not all of it, um, but it is a delicious flavor bomb, which is perfect for a bowl of soup noodle the next day also. So now you've got delicious flavor happening uh, with your curry paste. You're just gonna deglaze that pan with about two cups of your braising liquor. So now we're gonna season the curry, um, and we're gonna start with our tamarind puree. I've put on two teaspoons. Um, I like it pretty sour, so I don't mind a bit of it. Um, a good few dashes of your fish sauce, so don't forget this is your salt, so um, don't be afraid to use a bit of it. Um, and also a couple of tablespoons of sugar, just to sweeten it out. Now, this is really subjective, so make sure you're tasting it at this point, and you're happy with the balance of flavor, and you can put you know, as much or as little of, um, of, of any of those three ingredients to get that flavor profile how you like it. Also, it pays to remember that you've got a can of coconut milk going in this, um, so that flavor will mellow out a bit. So don't be afraid to supercharge it a little bit. So in goes your potatoes and get those cooking, um, and you want those kind of pretty much at, at cooked before you add your coconut milk, and this just uh, reduces the risk of the curry splitting. So 20 to 25 minutes later, we will pour in our can of coconut milk and you wanna make sure you're using the full fat coconut milk. Um, give that a stir around to make sure it's all emulsified into the rest of the sauce and let that keep simmering away. So another sort of 10 minutes have passed and it's time to incorporate the meat back into the curry um, and folding that through gently. Now one final check on seasoning, make sure you're happy with it and you're good to serve. So some steamed white rice in the bottom of a bowl. Uh, another confession to make here. I thought I had some jasmine rice, but I didn't. This is actually a medium grain rice before someone spots it and uh, attacks me in the comments. And we're gonna garnish this with some chopped peanuts, some fried shallots, and some julienne fresh green chili. Masamam curry, you've gotta try this one. And a special shout out to Zoe who requested this one on my TikTok. Mmm, it's so good. Aromatic. Sweet, sour, salty, the delicious beef coming through. You know, a potato just to kind of take the heat off every now and then. Hmm. Stunning. Thanks guys, make sure you like this video, it helps me a lot. Uh, and subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you next Wednesday for another one. Peace.